Hi guys, this is Teacher KRC and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I'm going to discuss to you the functions of communities in terms of structures, dynamics, and processes. This is the lesson 3 in Community Engagement, Solidarity, and Citizenship. So to start with, let us define first the meaning of community. Although I already discussed this to you during the first lesson and the second lesson, but I will still give you the meaning para mas lalo nating maintindihan at maunawaan ang kahulugan ng community. Okay, so a community is a group of people in the same geographic area under a common law that has a sense of fellowship, belonging, and obligation to the group. Types of communities are a neighborhood, church, a mom's group, a town, a Girl Scouts, etc. Ayan, po sinasabi natin na community, tandaan ito yung lipon o grupo ng mga tao na nasa isang lugar na merong pare-parehas na batas, na meron silang belongingness, fellowship, at obligasyon sa kanilang grupo. Now, I'm going to discuss to you the community, the functions of the community. Actually, we have five functions of the community. The first one is the production, distribution, and consumption. This, is, this means that the community provide its members with a means to make a living. Paano ba mabubuhay? Ano ba yung pagkakakitaan ng mga tao sa isang komunidad? So that's it. An example of that is the agriculture, the, in the industry, or services. And then we have here the socialization. The community has means by which it instills its norms and values in its members. Example of this is the tradition, modeling, or formal education. Number three, we have here the social control. The community has the means to enforce adherence to community values. This may be group pressure to conform and a formal law. Okay, next one is the social participation. This means that the community fulfills the need for companionship. This may occur in a neighborhood, in the church and businesses, or other group. Social participation. It means you involve yourself with others. Diba? nag siya saan. It happens we are in the neighborhood, sa church, businesses. And then we have here the number five, the mutual support. This means that the community enables its members to cooperate, to accomplish tasks. It can be too large or too urgent that can be handled by a single person. Supporting a community hospital with tax dollars and donations um, is an example of people cooperating to accomplish the task of healthcare. Mutual support, di ba? Pagsuporta natin sa mga nangangailangan within the community. Kanya, Rina, ito nga yung example natin dito, yung pagbibigay ng donation sa hospital para sa kapakinabangan ng mga nakakarami. Okay. Now, I'm going to discuss to you community structures. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng community structures? It is the proper way to investigate how a community is organized. Paano ba nabubuo ang isang komunidad? Which specifically pertains sa sinasabi natin na structures. So, number one, meron tayong community social structures. Ito do yung mga rules and expectation na ang ma, that, be, that people develop in the community over a time. This helps to regulate and manage the interaction with each or with one another. Social structures, di ba? Dito yung pakikipag uh, interrelate, pakikisalamuha sa mga tao. So, ito ay binubuo ng mga elements like this. We have five elements, if I am right. So, the first element is the social institution. This established patterns of belief. Ito daw yung mga paniniwala, uh, tsaka yung behavior that are centered on addressing basic social needs of people in the community. Ayan. Then we have here the social groups. This consists of two or more people in the community who regularly interact with one another and considers themselves as a distinct social unit. Next, we have the status. This is the position or the rank 
a person hold in relation to other members in the community and then we have here the role role means the obligation or behaviors expected from an individual on the basis of one's status in life next we have here the community cultural structure eh na pumunta na tayo sa culture di ba community cultural structure these are the institutionalized patterns of ways of life that are shared learned and developed and accepted by the people in the community meron din siyang elements under here we have the symbols the language the norms values beliefs rituals and artifacts next number three we have we will go now here to community political structure ito naman yung political or the structure the politics in the community and what structure na meron doon these are the people established ways of allocating power and making decision ito na yung pag-allocate o pagbibigay ng mga tao sa community ng mga kapangyarihan o obligasyon na kanilang gagawin allocating power so we have here the political organization ito do yung political parties or groups of the community who are engaged in political activities. And then we have letter B, the political relations. Ito naman yung how does the community are able to interact with and control other groups. Next is leadership structure. This is the composition of recognized leader in the community and the links or work workflow of their authority. O pwede daw yung leadership structure ay hierarch hierarchical from top to down leadership. And then we have here the egalitarian. This one is horizontal leadership. Number four, we have here the community economic structure. Ayan, ekonomiya na yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. Ito naman ay nagpe-pertain sa various organized ways and means through which the people in the community produces goods and services, allocate limited resources, and generate wealth in order to satisfy their needs and wants. Ayan. Paano ba yung ekonomiya, yung struktura ng ekonomiya sa isang community? So, meron din siyang elements. So, syempre, number one, capital assets. Puhunan, di ba? Ano ba yung capital? Ano yung meron ka? Meron bang pera? Meron ka bang mga assets, mga bahay, mga lupa, mga ari-arian? Ayan yun. So, these are the property or anything that is owned and has economic value which is expected to generate profits for a long period of time. Next is the vulnerably context. Ito naman yung insecurity in the well-being of individual and household in the community. Vulnerably context. And then we have here the business climate. This is the attitudes, the laws, regulations, and policies of the government and lending institutions towards business enterprises and business activities. Next is trade. Kung sinabi natin trade, it involves the sale and purchase of goods, services, and information. Okay, now I'm going to discuss to you community dynamics. As we all know, community dynamics, these are the changes that occurs in the community power structures and community population and composition over a time. So, ito daw yung changes o yung mga pagbabago na nangyayari sa isang community. So, we have here the factors affecting the changes in the composition of people in the community. The first one is the fertility. This is the actual reproductive performance that can be expected of a personal couple, group, or population during woman's childbearing years. This is 15 to 49 years of age. It may also help. It may also be subject to some deter determinants, such as the social preconditions of marriage, the legal preconditions of marriage, and the birth control methods. So, pag sinabi natin fertility, ito yung pagiging fertile o yung pagkakaroon ng anak ng couple. Ito yung papaano ba nagkakaroon o dumadami yung population sa isang community. 
And then we have here the morality. This is the demographic process relating deaths, often summarized by death rates. Survival rates and life expectancy contribute to lowering fertility rates. Mortality, di ba? Ito yung mga deaths. Pag sinabi natin mortality, pinag-uusapan natin, papapasok yung death. Ayan. Now we have here the migration. This is the process of moving from one place to another o yung paglipat. Minsan may darating sa atin, may aalis. Ayan, that is migration. And then we have here under migration, we have the internal migration. Ito yung movement ng people within the same geographical area or region sa loob lamang sa kop ng geographical area na yon. Pag sinabi nating external, ito naman yung movement ng people from the national boundary to another. Then we have here the types of community power structure. Bago ng topic to. So number one, we have the pluralists. Means the power becomes an attribute of an individual and it is widely distributed within the members of the community. Pluralist. Yung kapangyarihan daw, nagiging attribute sa isang individual at ibinabahagi ito sa lahat ng members within the community. And then we have here the elitist. The power generally conforms to the system of hierarchical stratification and is associated with those who possesses corporate wealth and prestige due to traditional or religious authority. Usually, di ba mga anak, naririnig natin yung word na elite. Pag sinabi nating elite, ito yung mga born with a silver spoon. Sila yung mga rich mayayaman. Ayan. So, sabi sa kahulugan dito, yung daw kapangyarihan o yung power ay nasa, nasa hierarchical stratification associated daw doon sa mga nagpo-possess ng corporate wealth or prestige o pagkakakilala, kayamanan dahil sa tradisyon or religious authority. And then we have here the factional. The power resides in numerous interests. Groups that holds relative equal power but they are struggling to control or dominate influences in community affairs. Factional. Ang power daw o yung kapangyarihan ay nasa, nasa maraming grupo na mayroong pantay na kapangyarihan pero sila daw ay um, nag struggle to control o kaya madominate ang pag i sa community affairs. Ayan, ang dami palang klase ng community powers. So we have here the amorphous. This refers to the seeming absence of an identifiable power structure in some communities. Mahalaga rin na nalalaman natin ito. So, aware tayo sa ano bang mga powers ang meron within the community? What kind of structures ang meron? ba? Diba? So, that ends my uh, that ends the lesson 3 now. So, remember mga anak, the type of community power structures. Number 1 is the pluralist. 2 is the elitist. Three is the factional, and the, the number four, the last one, is the amorphous. Okay. So, sana mga anak na itindihan at naunawaan ng ating lesson three at makatulong sa inyo bilang reference sa pagsasagot ng inyong learning activity sheet. So, that will be all for today. Good day and God bless you.